Hi, my name is Jesse Matheson, and I'm so pleased to be here talking about my experiences with freelancing and also how that created a bridge from one career to the career I have now, which is being a corporate instructional designer. So I started out as a teacher and my teaching background was a little bit non-traditional. I was a teacher for 18 years. Um, I spent two years in New York City Public School, four years in a New York City metro area private school, and for 12 years I had my own homeschooling and tutoring business. So it was a little bit unusual, but essentially um, I was a teacher of children. That's sort of, you know, how people identified my professional life and it made sense. It was accurate. So it was time for a change and I looked into instructional design and decided that's where I wanted to go. Um, but how to get there. So not surprisingly, I joined Idle. I learned a lot of skills. I made a portfolio I was really proud of. Um, I wasn't getting traction. I was getting interviews, but I wasn't getting offers. And I hadn't been that long, maybe a couple of months from the point when I finished my portfolio and felt like really, you know, was seriously applying for, for positions. It was maybe a couple of months. Um, and I was starting to get concerned. So at this point, um, something interesting happened. I was actually offered a job that I refer to as my unicorn dream job. Um, and now you may be aware unicorns aren't real and this job wasn't real. So, I mean, it was a real job. I did do it. They did pay me, but it wasn't a career. It wasn't ever going to go anywhere and they were never going to pay me enough for me to, you know, pay my rent and buy food and all those things that we work to do. It was a part-time job, um, in a field that I was passionately excited about. It was instructional design, um, but not corporate, um, sort of an unusual opportunity. And I thought to myself, you know, this is kind of a bucket list job. Um, it's not a good career move, but it is a bucket list job. It's something I'd wanted to do for a long time. I had not seriously considered because again, there's no money in that field. Like really you can't live. So I decided to take a risk or maybe not even a risk. I decided to make a calculated choice to take that job, do it for a year, enjoy it to the max. And since it was part time, freelance at the same time and use that time to get freelance gigs that would a teach me more about um, corporate instructional design and b um, improve my resume so that whole year um, on my resume is framed as freelancing which is accurate um, but it also does include a part-time job um, anyway so where did i get my freelance uh, gigs that I was doing at that time. Two main places. So I got some through Idle Academy um, and I learned a lot from those. And then I got some through Upwork and I also learned a lot from those. Now, um, neither one of those is really necessarily what I would consider how you build a business that's going to be long term. It's maybe how you start a business. but. Um, I think if you're going to be, you know, a full time freelance instructional designer, you'd also be needing to get clients in other ways is my guess. Um, Upwork is an expensive service. They do take a pretty substantial cut and it's competitive and you get people on there who are bargain hunters. So if I were wanting to be a full time instruct a full time freelance instructional designer, I would have definitely been building out my website very aggressively at that time. That was never my goal. I just wanted a job. Um, so some in interesting details about the freelancing. Um, I'll talk about a couple of the big clients I had through Upwork. So my two, I'd say most meaningful clients um, were there was one fellow who he, um, I'm going to be vague here because I signed a very B 
big NDA for, and knowing about what I know about his business, it makes sense. Um, so he was involved in um, cybersecurity training and he had normally done classes in person, then the pandemic hit, he had to move online. And so he had been very happy with how his classes were going in person, but when he moved online, he felt the service he was providing was not really up to his very high standards. So he wanted someone um, who understands instruction, who understands you know, how to really interact with people. He wanted someone to sit in on his classes and then give him notes, give him feedback, um, give him practical, actionable ideas about how to improve his course. Um, that was great. And that was a really, really interesting and very valuable experience for me because on the one hand, he hired me because of my teaching experience. On the other hand, it was this super, um, it was a super techie subject area. Um, and that really gave me something to talk about in interviews. You know, when I got into interviews and they were like, so do you have any experience in the tech fields? I was like, yeah, so I've been helping out with transitioning um, an in-person class about um, cybersecurity to be a virtual in instructor-led training. And it's uh, blah, 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 you know, it, it, it gave me the ability to talk about things that um, corporate interviewers wanted to hear. Um, another client I got on Upwork that I think is very interesting was um, a tech startup. And again, <laughs> they, oh boy, this one, they also had me sign a really serious NDA for very good reasons. So this tech startup, um, they, they, all, they paid me, but I wanted to get out when I got out because I thought the business idea was not going to work and I thought they were going to run out of money and I didn't want to be there when they, I wanted to already have been paid when they ran out of money. So this startup was, um, was a very clever idea that a couple of guys got and it involved um, selling some stuff, some tech stuff to school districts. And in order to do that, they needed some curriculum about how to use this tech stuff. And it was a very clever idea. The tech stuff wasn't, it wasn't practical yet. It wasn't going to fly in the classroom is my personal evaluation. Um, I can't tell you what it was because like I said, clever idea, signed an NDA um, and they didn't have the infrastructure behind it. So all they had was a clever idea. So they had to be secret until they, they, they understood the importance of them keeping this under wraps until they got a toehold hold in the market. Um, anyway, what they really needed was someone to write curriculum, just flat out plain curriculum. It was a, I forget if it was started at kindergarten or first grade, but like, I think it was kindergarten kindergarten through fifth grade just just a curriculum using their thingamabob um in the classroom like 10 they wanted 10 40 minute lessons for each grade level it was a big project um it was actually a really significant source of income for me that year um and again they hired me because i was a teacher but on my resume and in interviews i was able to frame that as um I did instructional design for a tech startup. Very useful, um, very, very useful. So those are really valuable experiences. Um, the biggest freelance project I did through Idol, um, and I did several. So Robin actually, um, she really came through for me. Um, you know, I was, I was going to talk about the biggest. There's actually two I'm going to talk about. So one was um, really, I'd say, organizing some information for a medical device company. They had a new version of their medical device and they wanted some training materials and they wanted it to be like organized and searchable and like approachable. And 
the materials they had. They had all the content, but it was like just hard to find stuff. So I made something on Rise that was hopefully organized, searchable, looked better, you know, just more professional. Um, and that was pretty much no muss, no fuss. Um, and I can't say I learned that much from that project, a little bit, but again, it was helpful during interviews to be able to say, oh yeah, I did this thing for a medical device manufacturer. Um, although I never ended up talking about that that one that much because as it happens, just by chance, I got more interviews in tech and fewer interviews in like pharma or medical devices or that kind of field. Um, the other one was a really big project, um, or I should say the other project, free, big freelance project I worked on through IDLE was um, there were some structural problems, um, which in retrospect, I learned a lot about how to do things if you are freelancing. And it was one of the, I was like, yeah, I don't want to do this. I never thought I wanted to be a freelance instructional designer in the long run, but this, like, there were some real, there were some real client management issues. The project itself was making a storyboard for this very ambitious, very creative project. Um, and I learned a ton about making a storyboard that other people could read, but also that would be saleable to a client. So that was useful. Um, but I did also learn a lot, like if you have a client that's a bit difficult and you're freelancing, you know, you need a, you need a written agreement, not just you know, a contract, yes, but also like a written understanding of all kinds of details. Um, so that when things go a little sideways, you can refer back to something and say, no, this is what we agreed on. Um, and I didn't, you know, I tried to have a clear understanding at the beginning, but I didn't really know what I was getting into. And so that got a bit messy. Um, in the end, I sort of, you know, I got to one milestone and I was like, I quit. I was like, I, I quit. Um, and so that was a learning experience. And it's something that I think is worth talking about because, you know, if you are a freelancer, Yes, you have a lot of freedom. You work for yourself. There's there's something wonderful about that. I, like I said, I had my own business for 12 years and I loved having my own tutoring and homeschooling business. I, at the time, I had a real fire in my belly and I wanted to build a business. Um, I don't have that anymore. I proved to myself I can do that. And the idea of going through and learning the business skills to required to build a really solid freelancing business because you know when you are freelancing you have a small business you might be the only person who works there but it's a business i did not want to really develop those skills I, i'm not interested in estimating projects and you know doing business to business advertising and i just that wasn't my thing. And so this project really showed me some of the, some of the skills that you would have, you would need to be good. And I did not, um, I didn't do a good job at the outset of setting up expectations. I tried, but it was the first time I was trying to do that. So I wasn't very good at it. And I learned a lot, but what I really took away from that is that's not where I want to go long-term. I personally want just a job. Which brings me to the job that I have now. So the job I have now, I will work for um, a company that does instructional design for other companies. So they contract, um, they do other things too. They, um, the main business is actually building computer labs. So if you want to, um, you know, your company, you want your people to know how to do this kind of programming with whatever, but you can't have them work in a real environment. You can hire the company I work for to provide labs where people can go into a sandbox environment and learn how to use various programs. Um, that's the main business of the company, but um, one 
additional service they provide is more traditional instructional design. Um, so this company hired me as a contractor. They hired me actually fairly early on in my freelancing journey. Um, I did some work, they were pleased, the project ended. I didn't hear from them for a while. Then I heard from them again and they were like, hey, we got some more work. And I was like, that's cool. I could do some more work. They hired me again as a short-term contractor. It went pretty well. Um, one of their clients decided to ramp up. They needed more hands on deck. And I was like, sure, I'd love to work for you guys full time, but not until this part-time job I have is complete. Not until I've done that for one full year and taken that through a full cycle. And I, I did not expect them to, you know, wait for me, but they did. Um, and so that's actually how I got my current full-time position was they got to know me through contract work. Um, and it worked out really well. So right now, um, I feel very fortunate. So I'm working on a team with some very experienced instructional designers. It's actually an all remote company. So on a day-to-day -day basis, I work with people. I'm in New York City. I work with people who are in Romania and Idaho and Washington State, Nevada, California, Georgia, um, all over the place. Um, so it's a fully remote company, but there's people with a lot of experience in instructional design and I'm able to learn a lot of skills. Um, and learn skills that would be much harder to learn on my own. So I feel like I'm really developing professionally. Um, and that's, that's exactly what I wanna be. Because as someone who taught for so many years, I feel like my understanding of how people learn and how you make materials and how you structure materials to help people learn is rock solid. But my understanding of like the corporate world is paper thin. So I've been adjusting to the corporate world, to um, the weirdness of using Teams on a VPN. <sighs> Very, don't recommend that, but you gotta do what you gotta do, right? But um, you know, how, do, how, are, how are things organized in a, in a system where, you know, there's two companies and they're worried about corporate espionage and they're like we want to have like lots of you know security protections and there's also like 72 million files like how do you organize that I didn't want to figure that out on my own but I'm working with people who know how to do that so it's great um yeah so that's been my path I hope that is helpful and I guess the short version is that I think freelancing can be a great way to learn and get paid for it. Um, to build your own freelance instructional design business, I think is wonderful. I personally didn't have the fire in my belly to do that. Um, and if you do want to do it, I think you should be aware um, that it might be, it might be hard. Um, of course, that doesn't mean you shouldn't do it, but it might be hard because you're you're not only developing your instructional design skills, but also your business skills and your business skills specific to this one business. Um, you might want to even move in and out of freelance and corporate or you know, full-time employment. You might wanna move in and out as it suits your needs. That's a totally legitimate thing. I think that's actually fairly common. It's certainly something that people seem to understand. Um, so just some food for thought. But yeah, in terms of freelancing, um, I got my clients through Upwork and through Idle. It worked out really well. Um, it wasn't what I wanted to do in the long term, but it got me where I wanted to be professionally. And so, I'm grateful to it. I hope you have good luck with whatever you choose on your path. Um, thank you for watching.